All right, guys, so tonight I want to do a deck that I haven't done yet. Uh, I've done similar types of decks as far as uh, adding in burn mechanics, but uh, I want to focus on decks that lock our opponent's cards specifically, and then we try and burn, or um, I'll use Yellow Jacket and cards like that to ding my opponent's cards in hand. Um, so basically just make it really annoying for them to play cards, and when they do finally get to play them, the power on them is mostly gone. So that's the goal of this deck. Um, I've featured previously self-locking decks, um, but this deck is not geared towards locking ourselves. It's locking the opponent. Uh, so I've titled this one Lock It Up. So here's going to probably be the showcase card here, uh, Inland Taipan, uh, and it says when drawn, two opponents random life on land cards in hand lock this turn, and then also two opponents random cards in hand burn 20 for the rest of the round. So um, hopefully we get that lock trigger and then uh, burn up some cards in their hand. So you'll see I've added several cards geared towards locking the opponent's card. So we have uh, Venus Flytrap. Actually, maybe I'll make this one the, the showcase card. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. How it goes. Um, so when drawn, an opponent's random card in hand locks this turn. And this card gains uh, plus 20 power this turn. So nice cheap card. That's why we've added it. This uh, just three energy cost and uh, hitting for 45 with a guaranteed lock. Uh, seems decent. Um, other locking cards, we've we've got Calypso. Uh, so she says, when drawn, an opponent's random card in hand locks this turn. And then once she's returned, an opponent's random card in hand locks next turn. So she's going to be locking down two cards. Um, originally, I had Merlin in this deck, but this deck is so expensive. Um, I opted to take him out. And actually placed in uh, Jack Frost, who says, when drawn, an opponent's random card in hand locks this round. Uh, and with the addition of Jack, I took a couple other cards out. I took a Blue Dragon out, which also just the nine energy cost on it was too expensive. Um, so I subbed in Hanging Gardens for the buff. It locks, uh, so when drawn, your cards in hand gain plus 35 permanently, and this card locks permanently. But because we do, we did include Eye of the Storm, primarily to lock the opponent's card, um, lock their cards up, uh, we can take the uh, added benefit if we overlock our hand. We can get Hanging Gardens back, and it's unlocked, uh, obviously getting it back in our deck and gaining another plus 35 on all our cards. Uh, that's always really nice when that happens. Uh, same reason we've added in Zhangdi Emperor. Um, another buff that uh, is going to lock all our cards up for, for the round. But uh, obviously we're going to try to play it by itself so that it overlocks our hand. Uh, potentially unlocking Hanging Gardens. Um, and then uh, we're not completely locked up for the round if we play it by, our, by itself. So uh, that's always good. Now, like I stated at the beginning of the video, um, as my opponent's cards are locked, I want to. This is going to let me take advantage of burning those cards. So you can see I've added cards such as uh, Kin Shi, uh, who says all remaining cards in both players' hands burn twenty this round, and if you won the turn, your opponent's remaining cards in hand burn twenty this round. Uh, I've also included, obviously, Yellow Jacket, who's going to continue. At the start of every turn, just dinging my opponent five power until played. Uh, that's the primary reason I have him. Phoenix is another card we have that's burning our opponent's cards up. Uh, burning 14 until played. And if you are losing the round, you're going to burn them again, another 14. Uh, Jack-o'-lantern also burns 15 for two turns. And then once returned, your opponent's remaining cards burn 20 for the round. So... Some strong burn effects there. Uh, I think I missed Coptrice earlier. He's, he's a nice cheap two-drop, uh, so I included him. Uh, and he also locks a random card in your opponent's hand for three turns. So basically just for the cheap, I wanted to get some cheap cards in here. A lot of these locking cards are quite expensive. 
Um, so just having some of these cheap twos and threes down here at the bottom. Uh, we're going to try and casual like usual. So uh, I've included Ghost and also Hourglass Dolphin. You guys know I love that card just for the cycling of these expensive cards. Sometimes you just can't seem to get the cards played and have a nice big turn. But, you know, you get an Hourglass Dolphin and you can pretty much play three cards that turn and start getting cards back in your deck because this seven energy limit we have uh, is going to be our biggest struggle with this deck uh, just because the cards are so expensive. Um, I don't think I mentioned Indigo Milk Cap. Uh, once you, once drawn, if so, if you hold this card in your hand and don't play it, every every turn you're going to get plus twenty five power. But if uh, if you do play it and it's before round two, turn two, a random card in both players' hands locks permanently. And if it's after round two, turn two, a random card in both players' hands locks for the round. So we'll probably try to play this. Uh, before round two, turn two, to lock out an opponent's card uh, permanently. And then after that round, we're probably just, if we draw it again, we're just going to hold it. Um, just get that plus 25 for the remaining of the remainder of the game. Um, so that's kind of the goal with that card is get that permanent lock on the opponent. We can then unlock our own cards uh, with the Eye of the Storm and the Zhang Di Emperor there at the top. Uh Another card I finally got a hold of, so I wanted to kind of sh uh, you know show it off in action is a uh, Arthro Plethora, and it says once played, it, it's uh, your opponent's cards in hand with forty five or more base power lose thirty power this turn and next. So it is uh, penalizing our opponent. I'm hoping it you know it hits cards that aren't locked. So now the cards he is forced to play are getting dinged and coming in low power while he he can't sit around obviously he can't play his other cards that are locked in hand so this could be kind of an awkward scenario for my opponent where you know he's forced to play something but now it's you know it's getting kind of dinged penalized in the process i guess you could say so that's kind of a neat mechanic i wanted to see if i could make it happen um and finally uh, last card is the King Arthur, primarily just for the four energy uh, for the round. If I can get it played on turn one uh, of any given round, that's what I want to do. Take full advantage of that. So if I draw it, you know, I'll probably end up holding it until it is turn one. So I can use it to its fullest effect. So, all right, that's the deck. Let's uh, go check it out in action. It's not the strongest deck, I'm going to say up front. I don't know how well we're going to do. I don't, I, you know, I tend, it's kind of a, I'd say, 50-50 type deck. It's not going to win a ton. It's not going to lose a ton. But we'll see. Maybe I'll have a lucky night with it. Played a little bit earlier with it, and I think I probably went, I think I won about half my games with it, I'd say. So um, it's more of just a fun archetype. I don't play it to just to win, you know what I mean? So... We're just going to show it off anyway. This is when I first started playing this game. I want to say this was probably my favorite archetype. was just locking up my opponent's cards constantly. All right, so looking at this hand, uh, we want to get King Arthur down on turn one, like we talked about. So let's go ahead and do that. Take full advantage um, of that plus four for the rest of the round. So you can see we're up to 11 now. Let's see here. What, how do I want to do this? So I want to lock up an opponent's card. And I think I want to start getting more energy going. So let's do it like this. Lock something, burn something, and buff energy. So there we go. I start burning up my cards, his cards. We're just going to burn the whole house down. I don't even care. And you can see we locked up one of his cards over there now for three turns. So it is just going to burn away. 
There's our uh, hanging gardens. You can see it buffed our cards. So if I play this Zeng D Emperor now by itself. Oh, I wonder if I should do that, though. He just played three cards down. We don't have a tremendous lead here. So I'm thinking I might hold off on that until next round. So let's let's try to ensure, or at least make it harder for him. As I think, had I just played Zhang Di right there, eh, I might have still won, but it would have been... V no, I, I think I would have lost. I would have lost by four power. So probably best we didn't do that. All right, so we take round one. Like I said, I want to I want to win them if I can get them. So take advantage of that. So we're up to nine energy. What's the play here? Do we go Zhang Di? Unlock Hanging Gardens. That's going to leave us what uh, eleven energy next turn. So we can play Hanging Gardens. Sucks we can't play that Jack Frost with it though. That would have been that would have been pretty nice. Alright, so that's gonna lock up our whole hand, which is overlocking the hand. So you'll see when you overlock your hand, it actually unlocks all your cards, like so. Alright, up to eleven. I think I might take this opportunity to play Hanging Gardens. It is 159, so it's not a complete waste of a turn. All right, we're only down by 10 now. All right, so I want to try to get the max down I can get since he's going, going ham as well. So let's do it like this. Maybe we get lucky in this Arthro Plethora dings some of his cards here. Nope. Damn, came up just a little bit short there. Unfortunate for us. He's got some good cards though. I saw Amber Room, that's a good card. Coltar, another good card in his hand. All right, there's our Phoenix Trigger. Start burning up some cards. All right, up to 16. That sucks he hit that Phoenix there. I really wanted to uh, play that. Is that permanent? What did he do to us there? Hmm... Do I want to waste my time playing that right now? I'm going to go like this and hope he beats us. Yeah, there we go. Trigger that ghost. Get that plus two energy here. He's got no problem with his energy over there, that's for sure. 39 energy. So we missed the opportunity for round two, turn two on this. I'm going to do it like this. It's going to lock three of our cards, but uh, two of those we don't even want to play really anyway. Unfortunate we drew King Arthur there. That was bad timing. Uh, do I have a shot here? Is my question. He's probably going to play three cards, right? I mean, he's got 46 energy. I don't see why he's holding that last card. But we're going to do it like this, see if we can uh, possibly win this. Nope. 
We are struggling here. All right, I think I want to get this hourglass out of the way here. It's kind of blocking up our hand a little bit. Do it like this. Ooh, good turn for him. Yeah, we are struggling at this point. Probably should have played Yellow Jacket earlier just to get um, cycling some cards because I feel like we kind of stalled out there, unable to play some cards in our hand for a little bit. We want to get Venus Flytrap down. Let's get you... Ooh. Ah. Do we do it like that? I think we do it like this. we got to try and catch up here. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be a, a good one for us. So what's the max we can get here? The 130 with the 64? Yeah, looks like the best we can do. All right, so we lost game one. Uh, like I said, this deck, sometimes it has uh, really good runs and sometimes it doesn't, so uh, that's okay. Can't win them all. But I figured we'd show the archetype anyway. Oh, we got a quest. Look at that. Let's go ahead and get that. And we'll try one more, see if we get lucky or not. Our last opponent had a fairly decent deck, so uh, that's okay. Don't mind losing to a good one. All right, round one here. We got the jack o' lantern starting to burn cards. So we probably want to try to lock up some cards now. With this cockatrice. Cockatrice. Get him online. He's going to be stealing some of our energy here. That's not good for our deck because this deck, this deck's uh, downfall is its cost. Several high energy cards. Honestly, I was trying to see how I could possibly fit another uh, energy gaining permanent, like a permanent energy gainer, into the deck, like MLK or something. I was kind of thinking of cutting this card right here, actually. But I figured I'd show it because I was kind of excited to finally get it. I finally traded for it. Uh, let's see. So he's got two cards locked. One's burning away over there. So we are sitting good. I'm going to do it like this. Ooh, good hit on that. Dinged a lot of his cards. Kind of kept us in the round there, actually. We were not sitting pretty. All right, we're up to nine energy. So you can see we got a very expensive hand here. So no matter what I do, I'm only playing one card. So um, it's a very close race, too. So I might just play Eye of the Storm. Because it's the highest car or highest power. Let's see if we can take this round one here. Should overlock our hand. It's the other benefit of playing it. it sucks. We actually overlocked our opponent's hand too, so that kind of uh, kind of screwed us a little bit there. Not 
So I think I'm going to go ahead and get this back in my deck. Let's see if I can get it, get it again. Keep buffing everything permanently. I'd like to get another energy gaining card. Ah, drew him a turn, turn too late. All right, so I think we go, we can lock opponent's card permanently here. And let's do it like this. And next turn I can, or the turn, maybe start of the, the round three, I uh, use the Emperor and try to unlock uh, my card that's going to get locked permanently here. Hopefully it's not the Emperor. There we go. Of course, it's King Arthur, which is also awkward. All right, so we're a little bit down here. Uh, it's a good draw on the Venus flytrap. So that's probably the most we can do right there. 140. Ah, we come up just a little bit short. Got some uh, heavy hitters going on with these uh, octopus cards. I actually showcase octopus, some octopus cards in one of my other videos. They definitely are heavy hitters. I can tell you that. Some good cards. All right, so we're not in a huge rush to unlock King Arthur since we want to play him on round one, or I'm sorry, turn one. So we can uh, we can wait a little bit. All right, we start burning our opponent's cards up again. He is a uh, energy stealing over there, so we are struggling with this deck. Is this deck's downfall? Gonna buff our cards for us. Also unlock King Arthur for the uh, start of the next round. All right, so he's probably gonna win this round, playing three heavy hitters most likely. So I'm gonna get Ghost in there, see if I can get myself a buff go ahead and concede this one all right we lose round three Let's see if we can get the last two though hopefully We want to get King Arthur down, start getting more energy going. All right. Mimic oct Octopus did not trigger, which is good for us. That would have been devastating to lose four energy there. We need to be able to stay alive here. All right, that's a close round here. Oh, you <laughs> locked the same card again. God dang it. All right, there's a good buff for us. Yellow jacket hidden. All right, we're up to 24 energy, so we're going to just play down our heaviest hitters here. Kind of debating if I need to play yellow jacket here. I think I need it to win. 244. No, I think that should be fine there. Yeah. All right, 
that looks like we take round four. He's got three cards locked, which is perfect for us. We're burning them down right now. Could be why he actually didn't even want to play that card over there when it was available. Um, I think he still should have just to cycle it, but um, no reason to leave a dead card just sitting in your hand, especially when you got 22 energy. <laughs> but to each their own, I guess. All right, so kind of think we need to play Milk Cap just to get it out of our hands since we are locked up a little bit as well now. Uh, let's, do we do it? Yeah, I think we do. Let's try to get a jump on this last round here. You see us just locking his cards down over there. Actually overlocked his hand, unfortunately. Here we go. Calypso is going to lock up another one. I'm wondering if we can get away with just that. That's going to give us 24 into the final round. And we're going to have Hanging Gardens to play. Yeah, I think we do that and see if we can get a big final round or turn. This is going to help him catch up a little bit, but we're going to get this buff and unlock our whole hand. So I'm thinking it will be enough. So we can put up some big numbers here. Let's see if he can can as well. And he cannot. So that's the deck, guys. Um, it was a close game there. Uh, we did end up making a little comeback at the end, which is perfect. Nice uh, way to showcase this deck in action. But um, that's going to be the video. So if uh, you guys uh, like the content, you know, feel free to subscribe. Shoot me a like or a comment. It's uh, going to be what keeps me making these videos if you guys want more. Uh, if you guys do have any ideas for decks or anything that you'd like me to showcase or you want to see, just uh, reach out, shoot me a comment, um, or contact me, however you want to do it. I get on Discord occasionally too, so um, however you guys want to do it, just uh, let me know, and uh, I'll try and put something together because I am... Looking for ideas for new decks. I want to keep giving you guys new content, new ideas. So if anybody has content or, ha or sorry, ideas for content, just uh, let me know. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.